Now, you're very welcome back. So we are honoured people. We are in the presence of Mr. Kevin Kilban. Come on in. It's good to talk to you. Hello. Hi, Joe. How's it going? Good, good. Can you see me there? It's more of a pleasure. You. I can see. Oh, I've got you. Oh, what, can, can, you. You, can you hear me now? Can yeah, you hear no, me I can now? see. I can see it. You look like you're in the Big Brother chair or something there. No, just um, I'm just sat in uh, in the front of the house here, trying to keep quiet. I've, uh, I mean, I was just trying to explain to you before we went on there. There, I've got the two babies at home with myself, full time father now, Joe. That's all. That's all I'm doing. So it's uh, it's great fun. But the baby just woke up five minutes ago, so now I feel like a bit of a bad dad at the moment. You know. Okay, so you're going for a Canadian Dad of the Year. Uh, 2023 you're in the, you're in the running over there i'm sure no 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 not at all not at all no and i've not been on there with you since you become a father so congratulations joe as well i want to say that to you on there so there you go thank you very much thank you very much yeah best 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 experience of your life eh? it sure is no it sure is yeah it sure i know is. you don't want to talk about personal feelings joe so i'll detach myself <laughs> from that straight away you're not the most personal guy you know and you'll hug me off air but when we're on air no you don't touch me don't touch me i know There's that too, I know too that. many weirdos out there i'll talk to you off air about parenthood all you want but maybe less yeah. so on youtube <laughs> i hear you, i hear you i hear you um so i guess it's uh, this is a bit of a check-in and uh here's what's going on in the world of football Yesterday was defined by just relegation craziness. So, yeah, really good day for Everton and Nottingham Forest. Leicester, very bad day. I was looking on the BBC website. They have a sports an analytics company now. And so they uh, reckon, based on the results yesterday, Everton have gone from like 60% chance of going down to just 26% chance of going down now. Oh, and God, don't tell me that. Do not tell me that. I don't want to hear that. That's good, though. They were There was a 60% chance and now only 26% chance, whereas uh, Leeds Joe, and Leicester... I'd rather, I'd, honestly, I'd rather, the stack, I'd rather the odds were stacked against Everton, 90% okay. chance, and then they'll get out of it. You know, they've got a history huh. of that, so... When everything's going smoothly, um, that's not the way that I want it as, as an Everton man. No, I don't want that right now. Just two more wins, obviously, probably guarantees it. I think probably one out of the last three guarantees it. Yeah. Um, and if you look at the fixtures, City at the weekend, I think, I don't know. I mean, the way City are going, they look unstoppable, don't they, right now? But I think you could take something out of Wolves and absolutely Bournemouth last week of the season. So, uh, I don't know. I... I I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful now. Certainly more hopeful than I was two weeks ago, I have to say that. Well, they just looked empty two weeks ago. Yeah. Well, the, the, I mean, like, Joe, I think the big thing when DeCorey was sent off was that we're probably going back a month now when DeCorey got his three-match ban mm. for the, uh, for the you know, the, the, the real punch in the face on Harry Kane that knocked Harry Kane out. Um, um, but, yeah, you don't, you, you're not with me there, Joe, are you? But anyway, um, but um, no, you're being no, I, I think, you're, being, you're having a go yeah. at Harry. I understand. No, it's okay. No, but I, I think um, I think they missed the Corey because the Corey's that that play now. Where Everton have just gone four five one. The Corey off uh, Calvert Lewin. Calvert Lewin coming back. Yeah. Big, a big plus for them. But the Corey can he he can get forward. He can get a goal. We saw that even when he was at Watford. He's not. Pro he's probably not done it enough while, while he's been an Everton player. But there's there's a lot to like about them the way that they're playing right now. Certainly, in the, in the, if you look at them in that uh, Brighton game last night, they're trying to force Brighton wide, keep him very narrow. The, the shape that we would have spoken about, very basic stuff, really. But Brighton aren't a side that want that want to cross balls. So they said, right, you go and cross. We'll deal with any cross. Bringing Yerry Mina back in, I think, certainly give them that 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 presence as well. And then they hit them on the counter. It was a perfect way to, to play against Brighton. All the goals were, were were real dynamic football. Some of the football that I like to see, and I've said this to you in the past, I think there's there's many ways to play. It's not all about being Man City and playing open and expansive football and being great to watch. Personally, I I'd, I look at teams sometimes and I think you want to actually look good rather than 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 have the substance that goes with that. Get results. That's the way that I. That's the way that I was all, always taught as a kid. And I'd rather get results sometimes than actually have that that beautiful product that you can see. So, it was nice to see Everton play that way yesterday. I feel Brighton in great form. Some of the sides and some of the scalps that we've taken over the last few weeks suggest that they're a very very good side. But it was just a good way to to see Everton playing in that counter attacking style, and they destroyed Brighton the way that they played. I'm more of a style over substance man. I know you are. I know you are. Yeah, you're all old style, Joe. All as you can clearly tell. Um, nothing to back it up half the time. But no. there you go. That's just the way that some people <laughs> are, 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 are bred like that. Isn't We're it? built differently. We're built differently. Yeah. Um, I mean, a strange season for Everton. 
there's just a sense, OK, they may well survive this year and Deitch has done a good job and he clearly um, knows what he's doing. But man, I have just a grim sense around that club for the last couple of years now. And I, I suspect they're in for more of the same next year. Maybe they support Deitch over the summer. I don't know. How are they going to support him, though, Joe? This is the thing. It, it's, you know, the, there's clearly a disconnection with supporters and, and, and the ownership of the club. Sean Dyche and the players are, are in the middle, aren't they? Where yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd hate being, you know, someone like Seamus Coleman as the captain now of the club. Sean Dyche, or certainly the senior players that's playing for Everton, where you're coming out and you're having to answer these questions regarding ownership, uh, regarding supporters and they're stuck in the middle not really knowing what to say not wanting to offend the, the, the top brass and, and not wanting to offend the supporters with, with what they're saying so Everton need needs something I'm hopeful you know I've got to whatever you do touch wood whatever you want to do I'm hopeful Everton will stay up but I said it last summer Joe last summer when they stayed up skin of the teeth stuff last year they had to they had to change something over the summer and they didn't. So what was what was going to change across the course of this season? There was nothing really that was going to change. So there's something that needs to be done now. Whether if they're going to keep Sean Dyche on board, as you say, back him, but but also have something in place. Whether the owners are going to sell, you know, to 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 appease everyone, bring everyone together at the club, but something needs to be done dramatically, given that they're going to be in the new stadium hopefully next season. Mm. Uh, Leicester looked to be in dire straits. To concede five against Fulham under those circumstances speaks of all kind of ills. They have Liverpool next. Then they have Newcastle away, which is not a fun place to go at all at the moment. They have West Ham at home, final day of the season. It has been uh, quite something to watch this club almost wither in the vine. And I, I, I don't have a great feel for Dean Smith one way or another, but it, it doesn't feel like he's made a massive impact there. And... Uh, they're looking very sorry at the moment. Yeah, I, 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 I obviously I, I know what, what Dean Smith has done at Brentford and what he's done at Villa in, in the last, what, 10 years or so in, in management. And he's done very, very well at those clubs when he, when he was at them. So, But when he went into to Leicester, it wasn't necessarily the appointment that was going to really get the club back on board and or get the supporters back on board and really lift the whole club. Um, and that's not being disrespectful to him. It's, it's more the feeling of what when you, what you're reading and what you're seeing. Um, certainly, the more vocal Leicester City supporters, anyway. So there's something that you know. If, if I'm looking at them and seeing the quality of players that they've got, there's going to obviously if they went down. Madison, Barnes, all these players that they've got, this quality uh, 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 select group that they've got throughout that team will probably leave. Most, most definitely leave, I would say. And they'd have to seriously look at, at how they've done things themselves in the last few years. I think everyone now, probably, I'm sure that you, you've you spoken about it in the last couple of years, of course, looking at Brighton, of course, looking at Brentford and the model that they've set up to get the success that they've got now. And, you know, Leicester and, and Everton and maybe one or two other teams, overpaid players, Wage bill has gone through the roof. Certainly Leicester, since winning the Premier League, the wage bill's gone through the roof. Everton, during that spell wage bill through the roof they've not necessarily been able to balance the books properly and I'm got Everton that is that is absolutely the case so Leicester and Everton you know they'll probably have whichever one of those teams does go down they've got to look at themselves clearly in the mirror to see what decisions have been made not just last summer but certainly in the last two or three summers gone by to, to see where those mistakes have been made mm. uh, Meanwhile so if Dean Smith isn't that electrifying appointment Leeds have gone Marcelo Bielsa Jesse Marsh and the inevitable conclusion that is Big Sam uh, they have Newcastle they have West Ham and they've Spurs at Ellen Road last day of the season you, you can't think it's a highly motivated Spurs team who will pitch up at Ellen Road on the final day of the uh, season a sneaking suspicion Sam's going to be picking up that £3 million bonus Kev I'm with you I'm with you totally I think they've I think they've got enough as well I, uh, even under Jesse Marsh, I was watching quite a few of the Leeds games under Marsh, and they, they were playing well in games, and they were they were frustrating because they were con conceding so many goals from being too open. Now there's got to be a balance. Certainly, if, you, if you're going to be at the bottom of the table, you've got. To, I, I do feel, you know, Brighton have gone a certain way, as I said before, and Brentford are playing a certain brand of football that's really pushed them on to the next level, being very open. If you look at Brighton against Everton and how they played, that was a bit like Leeds. I felt under Marsh, they were open to counters. They were, he was trying to introduce that really high tempo football that 
the or, or reintroduce, should I say, that, that Bielsa that had there, and it just it just didn't click for them. I just felt they were too open. So I think that they were a little unlucky. I think on the marsh on on occasions. I I do think that. Um, but I'm I'm with you. I think Sam will get them out of it. I think it will be Big Sam at the end of the season that will be smiling and yeah, pocketing um, a few extra quid in his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> So then who is going down is the question. So again, my my uh, analytics, analytics uh, company, excuse me, on BBC, have Southampton nailed on, as everybody knows. Uh, they have Leeds 73% chance, so they reckon Leeds are second most likely. Leicester 68%. Are they? Yeah, and as I mentioned, oh. Everton 26 Nottingham Forest 34%. Forest have Chelsea and then Arsenal and then Crystal yeah. Palace away last game. Maybe they'll uh, sneak Maybe back. Maybe three points against Palace, yeah, I- Chelsea, you, you, you know, I know that you guys have probably spoken enough about Chelsea, but you do feel as though it's, it's got to click at some stage with the calibre of players you've got. Maybe this season's a write-off for them mm. now and, and it, it's about next year and beyond and the new coach that's going to go in there. But but I can't see him taking anything from Arsenal, regardless of whether the league's over or not at that stage. I think Forrest are probably still in trouble. I do. Uh, I think they might, if they're going to have to get a result against Palace, you, you, you'd think they would do. Um, but I think, I think it'll be... I think Leicester would probably go now at this stage. I think I think it will be Southampton, obviously. I think Leicester will. And then I think it will be Forest, Everton or Leeds will be that other side that will go down with those two. Yeah. Oh, pretty interesting. At the yeah. other end of the table, did you, because I haven't talked to you in quite some time and, and we're speaking ahead of Man City playing Real Madrid. This is going out on the radio as they play. Did you always feel City were going to reel in Arsenal? I did, yeah, I did. I, I, I felt as though it, they were in a false position. I think they had a great start to the season. If I look at, I, you'd always look at players man for man, and I know that that myth probably goes out the window sometimes when a, a team comes from nowhere, Leicester I spoke about earlier on, to, to claim the league when they don't necessarily have the best players. But City, I, I felt as though started the season a little bit below par. I do think that. De Bruyne wasn't at his best up to Christmas, and that maybe. You know, we were looking at his performances during the World Cup as well. That everything wasn't right with Belgium. Pep's obviously managed his his minutes as well to get De Bruyne right. Foden's coming back into it. And if I look at man for man against Arsenal, I mean, there's can you see many of those Arsenal players getting in City's team? And I don't, I don't see that. And I think they were always going to find that consistent pattern. I think they were always going to find that that run of, of form. I think they are the best side in the world right now. And, and I thought that probably at the start of the season, if truth be known, I just don't think they showed that consistently enough. So I think this if, if any side's going to beat them in the Champions League, it'll be Real Madrid, won't yeah. it? But over 180 minutes, I know they did it last season. I, I just think, I think City have got too much for them. I think they will... Um, I think they will beat Real Madrid. I think they win the Champions League. I think the Premier League, yes, is, is certainly theirs now. And... That the emotions maybe of a, of a Manchester derby for the for the FA Cup final that may, might be something that catches them out. I don't know, but nailed on it looks like for the treble, doesn't it? I I would think so. Again, we could be talking uh, about a team who are two or three nil down against Madrid uh, as this goes out in the radio. But I I, I dare say yeah, you're right on the treble front. Well, I, I mean, the thing yeah. is as well with City though, Joe. Even you know, regardless of what's going to happen tonight in the game, you can see them going to the Bernabeu and and getting goals mm. regardless of, of what's going to happen. So. I don't know. I, I I fancy City strongly. I do. I, I Real Madrid, as I said, they did them last season, and they probably only turned up for seven or eight minutes of that 180 minute game last year, or beyond it, whatever it was for for, for the second leg. So I thought they were really fortunate, Real Madrid, to beat City last year, and they got over the line. And you know, it happens sometimes. Chelsea winning the Champions League in was it 2012 when they didn't play the best football. Yeah. And Real Madrid last season didn't play the best football, but they, they had a will to win. Maybe going back to your style over substance earlier on that we were talking about, Real Madrid found find a way to win games. They've got so much experience there. So if anyone's going to beat them, as I said, it'll be Madrid to beat um, to beat City. But I just think City, again, man for man up against Arsenal, man for man up against Real Madrid. There'd be very few Real Madrid players mm. that were getting City's lineup, in my opinion. Again, I haven't talked to you much this season. Uh, would you say you enjoy watching City a whole lot more this season with the Haaland factor and just that touch more variety in their play? It's it's a less almost um, dead kind of a style. Yeah, I, uh, it's funny. I, I've I've watched you. I've listened. To, I've I've heard guys on your show. Statistically, what was it two three months ago? Statistically, City are a worse side with Haaland in the team and and things like this. 
he is a game changer in those big moments, isn't he? And you can't get away from that fact that you look at the Champions League games when they've been a bit tight and City historically or during Pep's reign, they've not necessarily been able to find a formula. Pep's changed a system. He's changed personnel and played them in different positions. And some might have suggested, maybe myself included, that he's maybe just tried too much and overthought going into certain games. But when Haaland's in your team, you see what centre-halves do, Joe, against him. They, they automatically drop. They don't mm. want to give him space in behind. So it, it's freeing up other players in, in, in the team. And... Um, I, I I love watching City with, with Haaland in the side yeah. because we've said it over the last four years, five years that if they had a striker, they would be, they would probably have gone on to win another Champions League or, or two Champions League. And when they had Aguero, Aguero said recently, didn't he, that Pep wouldn't play him because he was overweight at times and he had to be a certain weight for him to to get into Pep's side. So there's a reason why that wasn't the case. That wasn't that why why, why he wasn't playing at times. So. Um, yeah, I think Pep probably, as I said before, maybe has changed systems around and not necessarily done it for the benefit of that side. But I think this year will be the year. And I've and just in answer to your question, I, I love watching them with Haaland in the side. You can't get away from that. Anyone who's played the game and anyone knows how difficult it is to score a goal in the first place, to see what he's doing, it's just, it's it's phenomenal. It's, it's incredible to watch. Yeah, it's outrageous. It is outrageous. Uh, on... Um... Manchester United I wanted to get your sense of where they are because uh, there's uh, like a bit of slippage now with two defeats and Liverpool's suddenly uh, looking to touch more sprightly and there's only um, a point in it admittedly with um, United having a game in hand the David De Gea situation we'd Pat and Evan on last night Pat sort of felt you know what there's the odd high profile mistake but to be fair he still has these matches where he wins games on his own or you know, he generally makes a lot of saves. I I don't know. I don't know if you've ever played ahead of a keeper who's liable to throw in a mistake like that out of nowhere. But it, it mm. does feel to me, maybe harshly or otherwise, that like he's kind of he's just too many of these things now to, to stick with long term. Uh, I, I agree with that. I agree with what you're saying there, Joe. I, I think he's made too many. Uh, and we're not talking this season. We're talking over a number of years now. And he does make some incredible saves. Uh, I don't think his distribution is anywhere near as good as Allison or Edison. Um, that's clear to see. Maybe one or two other goalkeepers from around the world as well. I think there's a, there's better um, pl- uh, goalkeepers now with uh, the feet, and that's that's where Ten Hag would probably want to go if if City are going to kick on to the next level. I think Ten Hag would probably want a goalkeeper that's better with his feet, regardless of of these high profile mistakes. He's on that much money, the high one of the highest earners in the Premier League right now, so you would suggest he's probably going to see his contract out regardless. I think he's got another year after this. Am I right, Joe? I think that's right in saying, mm. isn't it? I think he's got another year. So um, he's he'll probably see it out. And if he's around the club, you, you, you suggest he's going to play unless there's a huge offer that comes in from, from some team, which is unlikely. It's unlikely to happen now, given his age. No, none of the big clubs are looking to take a goalkeeper in with the wages that he's got, with the with his age profile as well, a lot of the bigger clubs are all looking for a younger goalkeeper that's going to have a ten year career at the, at a club. So, I don't think he's he's going to be able to move. It's about United maybe sticking with him at the club, and it might even be the year after that United might go and get a new goalkeeper. I think um, because you, you're not going to you're not going to have De Gea sitting on the bench on his what three hundred and fifty grand a no. week. It's just not going to happen. Unless there's a loan move, perhaps that could come about. Maybe. Well, that's true. That's true. It's such a strange thing for someone who's so brilliant to throw in these mistakes. It's hard to reconcile the two, but yeah. uh, it's too much of but a trend. I, I've got, I've, I've had this issue. Maybe I suppose, and there's a lot of Everton fans that will slap me down with Jordan Pickford. I think Jordan Pickford's the same. Personally, in my opinion, I think uh, a lot of Everton's troubles do come from that. I think that he, he makes incredible saves. He's a great shot stopper, but then he's liable to throw things in and. That's where United are with De Gea. I feel it's exactly the same scenario. Uh, on Liverpool, so a bit of a resurgence. Mo Salah did his thing again at Anfield. Much of the talk has centred around Trent Alexander-Arnold's new position. Are you a fan of that? Uh, yeah, I've, I've not actually seen a lot of Liverpool. I've, I've watched a lot of the highlights over the last few weeks. I haven't yeah. watched a lot of the games. I saw the, the Spurs game a few weeks ago, the 4-3 win a couple of weeks ago. That was the last Liverpool game that I watched, actually. Um, but... 
there was that, you know, when Trent Alexander-Arnold playing as an isolated right back, amazing going forward. But it, again, we looked at him so so often. We said his positional sense wasn't great. Liverpool get caught out down their right hand side. He's maybe out of position and he's slow to react at, at times. And certainly diagonal balls was a, a real worry for Liverpool when you watch them play. So. Um, yeah, I think I think for Liverpool it was about maybe finding a position that suited him for his talent because there's nobody better with his passing ability, his passing range, his shooting ability, dead balls. Liverpool have to have him in the side because of, of those abilities that he's got. But playing him as an isolated right back at times, he, he, he got caught out too yeah. often, in my opinion. It is kind of amazing the way managers borrow from each other in that there's the... Um... Sinchenko at Arsenal and then obviously Guardiola very much pioneered it and now Klopp has said well sod this I'm not going to yeah. be too proud to copy them and, and suddenly it becomes vogue all of a sudden Yeah I mean watching City again in the Champions League and, and what they were doing four centre halves uh, they played in the last game um, I can't remember now off the top of my head um, but they Bayern, had four centre Bayern. halves out there Bayern yeah Bayern uh, four centre halves playing very narrow at times when they had the ball. John Stones was stepping into midfield, playing in the base of midfield. And it looked like then it become a three. Then without the ball, they become a, 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 almost a four four two, four four one one. Brilliant counter attacking style. How they played looked very solid in, in playing that way. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting. And again, I mean, Guardiola said that Kyle Walker is not great at playing that position. That's why he's not had a lot of game time recently. Mm. Walker and. You can't say that with Trent Alexander-Arnold. He he's almost suited to Man City with with his attributes that he's got playing that type of role, playing a City where it can revert to a back four, go into a three three man defence with him sat in there. So it is interesting to see that sometimes when you see uh, coaches watch other coaches, like it's constantly happening. We know that, but to certainly go and and actually start to use what they're doing and and thinking and or feeling it's so beneficial to your side, and you're going to get results. And Liverpool's form has has in, uh, improved dramatically mm. in the last uh, month or so, hasn't it? Off the back of that, big time. I know you watch wingers closely. Invariably, I'd say players all watch the position they played in pretty closely. Yeah, this has been the year of Grealish, and he's. Uh, He's yeah, found his yeah. straps and looks himself again. And I mean, he's fit in beautifully to that team all of a sudden when it, it just didn't look like it was going to work for a time last year. I mean, he's, he's class though, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's class. You can't get away from that. He's top quality. And you can't, I, I, when any player, no matter what level that, you, that you're at, you get a move to, to a club, certainly a big move. And I would have experienced that to an extent myself, you know, going as record transfers in certain clubs. The spotlight's on you immediately and you have to deliver You've or you feel like you have to deliver. And you maybe start to do things that's not necessarily suited to your game. But if you transfer that to Grealish, going into Man City, that played a total different style of football. Everything revolved around Grealish when he was at Villa. And everything revolves around De Bruyne, essentially, at City. So he's maybe had to... He's had to change his own game, change his style. And that doesn't happen overnight. Just when we talk about coaches needing a bit of time, players to move into certain uh, clubs and then then get up, get themselves up to speed with a certain style of a coach. And we know Guardiola is so technical, is so uh, position-specific at times when you're watching the players and he doesn't want players at three in a line across a pitch at times. You know, he wants them having different angles. And Greenish is obviously having to master this and he's starting to, he's had to learn on the training ground and people thinking a hundred million pound player going in there, he, he's automatically at the click of the finger going to, it's going to happen for him. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't happen like that. And um, I think this season he's, he's or, or certainly in the off season last year, I think he's gone away. He's obviously had to study his own game. He's obviously had to speak to, to what Guardiola and maybe one or two others around the club to, to get himself right for the start of the season, first of all, but also get himself in, in a, in a, in a, in a in a, a frame of mind that he's ha- actually influencing games and mm. this season he's been great he's been great to watch but his quality is shining through for the, for the ability that he's got because I thought he was almost at times self-conscious last year and overthinking things mm. and what am I meant to be doing here and what would Pep want me to do mm. here as opposed to probably be, probably himself. yeah yeah whereas he's almost I internalized think... whatever the details and the information uh, that Pep has is, is, is asked him to fulfill are yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think that's absolutely the case, Joe. And I think he did. He do an interview recently in the last couple of weeks that I read where it, it was a little bit of that as well. Maybe overthinking his own game. Yeah. I, I think he. I think he said himself. Look, he said it's not been disrespectful to to lads that I would have played in the past. He said, but I'm getting my head down and I'm getting my head up from going on a run. And 
I'm, I'm seeing Kevin De Bruyne and I've got to give him the ball. Yes. Or, yeah, you, you know, and I, I think many of you look at Portugal over the years with Ronaldo in the side, you know, and even when he went to Man United last season, Ronaldo, you've got to give Ronaldo the ball and you're taking away, you're not necessarily choosing the right option at times just by doing that. And I think that's what Grealish, as you say, was doing. I think he was second guessing himself. He was doing things that, that, you know, giving it De Bruyne when he wasn't in a great position, losing possession of the ball, trying to find top class players that was around him. And yeah, it's difficult to get through that, I think, certainly when, you, when you're making that step up to different levels. It was how I felt that time we played Astro together. I was like, I just, I, I just better give it to Kev, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, well, you only it's played like... one game. You only played one game, Joe, and your toe went, didn't you? So, are you, you still retired with that toe? It's unbelievably sore. I'm telling you, it finished yeah. Gary Lineker's career. It's no joke. I'm not saying it's a joke. I'm not laughing at it at all. But I'm just saying <laughs> you that you, be. you played, you played 20 minutes, and I was impressed. You know, <laughs> um, you put Dave McIntyre to shame. That's all I do know. I mean, there's there's a lot that puts Dave McIntyre to shame. Well, but you I mean, look good at a minimum. Certainly with your back to goal. I think your vision, your your, your first touch. There, were, there was a lot to admire about your game. Stop now. Um, Evan Ferguson speaking of somebody who's actually good with his back to go so yeah. John O'Shea was at a road show with us last week and obviously he's part of Stephen Kenny's backroom team now and we just asked you know this Ferguson kid what's your read on him and we thought he would say yeah you know great lad great, yeah. long way to go let's not put pressure on him and move on instead he obviously uh, felt enough confidence in Ferguson's psychology to say yeah I think he'll um I think he'll have a right good go at Robbie's record. Yeah, I, I do think that. We've certainly got the ability to do it. Well, what? He, he's only got... 68. I mean, we were like, geez, Joe, steady on. Joe, he's got, he's, got, he's got one international goal, so it is a bit of steady on regarding it. Um, I spoke to somebody, uh, I'm not going to give names away here, I suppose, but I spoke to somebody who's connected with Brighton right now, and I, I recommended a player that was playing out in the MLS that ended up going to... Um, Sorry, you got me there. The player that was playing MLS that ended up going to Girona. Um, and I said, look, I think you've got to sign this guy. I do think he's top class. He scored four last week, though, the other week against Real Madrid. Um, he's probably the best MLS player, striker, uh, Castellanos. He's, he's really good, playing for New York. Anyway, uh, he's, when he scored four last week, it was more... I, I went back on and I messaged him. I said, do you see the boy I, I said mm. scored four against Real Madrid? He said, yeah, but he's not good as our boy Ferguson. Oof. That's what he said to me immediately. And... and it's true. It's uh, Sorry, we lost you there. You're back. We we lost you just yeah. as you were saying that the Brighton uh, contact said to you, well, he's not as good as our boy Ferguson. And you just said, yeah. you agree, you think it's true. I think he's got everything. And again, I, I've spoken maybe to, it was OTBAM. I don't get a chance to get on with you too much, Joe, these days. But it was to the guys on there, we're just talking about him. And there's, there's so much to admire about his game, Joe, with... I, you look. You always look at strikers, don't you? You look. Every, we're all going to compare every every striker we've we've ever had to Robbie now, or we're going to have now to Robbie, and it is an unfair comparison because of the record that he's got. But what he has is that physical presence. We know six foot three, whatever he is, he can run off the shoulder. He's got a little bit of pace. He works the channels well. He, he's got that sort of side to his game. But the standout feature to his game is where he comes off into the little pockets playing as a 10 on the half turn, taking the ball on his back foot with the ability to run at defenders and the ability to pick a pass out. Um, good in the air. I mean, what doesn't he have? That's the thing. What doesn't he have? Mm. We, we're all excited. We're all extremely excited about him and because we know the ability that he's got and everybody in Ireland knows from, from Bowles and everything that he achieved there at such a young age. Everyone has been excited about him for a long time than, than it's been for most of us over the last season or two. But yeah. he's got something very, very special. And I just hope, 
hopefully, I, again, I'll touch everything possible for him. I, I, I wish him all the very best in his career. I think he's got a, a huge f- a future ahead of him. Hopefully staying injury-free. He's had a couple of problems with his ankle over the, over the last while, hasn't he? And hopefully he can correct that. I had a few issues with my ankle as a kid as well. And, you know, once I'd gone to see a few specialists regarding wearing uh, certain um, inner soles in my feet, it's, it corrected me and it helped me out immensely. So... Yeah. There's little things that I'm sure at Brighton that he would be able to to get sorted there, uh, but he's he's special. He is very very special. You can't get away from that. Brighton Brighton have got an amazing system and how they scout players and even the players that they've got at the club and 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 where they send them and how they monitor them, and they think that this guy is the very best and that's the truth. Um, um, what's the the midfield call? Caicedo Caicedo was the, was one that you know we all I was looking at him certainly ahead of the World Cup and just admiring how good he was. And th- again, my guy's telling me this guy's top class. They mm. think he's real top class in, in N'Golo Kante category. And they're feeling the same of Evan Ferguson. This is where they feel he's top class. And who's to say that he can't go on and, and really reach the heights? I would like him to maybe stay another season at Brighton, really go and establish himself, go and get 10 or 15 goals next season, hopefully get a, get a good run of games. I think that is the most important thing for him. And hopefully we can get the benefit with Ireland from him over the next uh, 10, 15, maybe years beyond. Hopefully that'll be the case. Yeah, I mean, it's so exciting after uh, the post Robbie Keane Barron era, just that the next decade, if nothing else, there's a goal scorer in the side just changes yeah. the complexion entirely. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly the case, isn't it? And so often that you and I have spoke about this Robbie Keane issue, everybody would have always said, certainly in the last six or seven years, well, we don't have a Robbie Keane. Yeah. We weren't actually getting balls into the penalty, Joel, were we? We weren't actually putting balls in that any striker could have got in positions. And even when we did, most of the strikers were, were so deep, they were out of the penalty area, they weren't getting into positions actually to score the goals. So this is something that has improved, I think, in the last year. I think that's been something that, that will actually get better and better when you've got someone like Ferguson, that balls will go into the penalty area. They will try and find him in certain areas. So if we are now in a position where we're ready to kick on as a team, uh, we have to start scoring goals. That's the most important thing. And he looks primed and ready, doesn't he, to, to go on and be, you know, I remember Robbie through certain campaigns for us, he, he was regularly scoring six, eight, ten goals through campaigns. That's what Evan Ferguson has to do for us. He's got to start scoring eight and ten goals in four or five of the next seven campaigns. Hopefully, six campaigns. That's what we're that's what we're we're looking from him, and that's what's expected of him given his talent. And what did you make, by the way, of the Irish performance against France? Um, yeah, I, I was I was imp- I was impressed with it. I thought it was um, I was disappointed, obviously, with the result. That's goes without saying. I don't think we probably had enough chances in the game to really, but we're playing against France. Probably, and I would say yes, I know Argentina are world champions, but probably the best group of players in world football right now. And I like what, what Stephen Kenny did to, with the way he set up narrow midfield. Um, I like what Jason Knight did on, on, on the day. I like what uh, Malumbi did on the day. I like certain players within that side. I think that there's more quality to come after after that performance. That's the way that I would look at it. I think that it, it's certainly something to build from. And we're all looking at this Greece game now, height of the summer. I just hope that it's... Remember we, we, I remember looking back a few years ago, a um, couple of years ago, when we played... Um, it was the game that we played? Andorra. Didn't we play Andorra in the heat yeah. of the summer? And it just didn't go well. And we, we've played Armenia in the heat of the summer in the past as well when we've not been able to get going. And it, it's going to be difficult. Can't get away from that fact this Greece game is going to be so difficult for, given the, the time of the year that we're playing. But I think there's a lot of quality. I think there's we're building something. I do I do still feel that. And, and I think we have to get behind Stephen and, and the team. I think there's something better to come from this group of players. I do think that. OK, well, we'll talk about that more in uh, due course, obviously. Um I'm curious for your thoughts on this Chelsea uh, situation before you go. So they did finally get a win against Bournemouth, and yeah. I mean, I could just see like the relief amazing, and when it went one all. Like, you could just see the colour drain from Lampard's uh, face. Yeah, like there's there's two aspects. There's one Todd Bowley and what a like mad way to run a football club. And then secondly, yeah. I was making the point to Pat last night that 
When Lampard took the job, I didn't really think that these five, six, seven games would have any bearing on his reputation either way. I thought he might win three or yeah. four of them or five of them and two draws and a defeat or, you yeah. know, just something kind of grand and uh, he'd, he'd head off into the summer. But actually, it's, this has had such a damaging effect on Lampard's reputation. I mean, I think now yeah. any chance of Premier League job is pretty much gone on the back of what's happened here. Yeah. I think that's what everybody thought. Hiding to nothing. It, it didn't make any difference to Lampard. He was going in, steady the ship. Probably, if anything, improve his managerial record, wouldn't it? You yeah. know, certainly win percentage record. Just get four or five wins yeah. out of the whatever games and that would be it. But no, um, I th- there's obviously, there's something, there's, there's the, you, and it's difficult when you're looking at that, uh, from, certainly from Lampard's perspective, to go, well, they spend that much money. They've got all these players that are sitting on the bench and sitting even not in the, uh, or not getting game time anyway. And I can only imagine what it's like on that training ground. I can only imagine what it's like having certain players that, 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 are, that are playing there with the, with the attitudes and with the, um, with the, um, the, the, the auras probably that surround a lot of them or they feel that's around themselves half the time without necessarily going on to, to, to seriously establish themselves. So, yeah. I don't think anyone really appreciated that with Lampard going in there and what he had to do just to get everybody on board because clearly clearly he's been unable to do that. Clearly he's been unable just to get all the fringe players on side, which was probably as as many, many, many as you know that you were spoke to in the past, Joe, many guys would say the beauty of Klopp, the beauty of Guardiola and maybe others are um, it's not necessarily the one to eleven half the time. It's this the squad and keeping every single player happy at the club because as soon as one or two that aren't playing are unhappy, it just becomes like a disease that goes through the club. And that's what seems, in my opinion, has happened at, at Chelsea. They've just got too many big, big players that they've signed on big, big fees and big, big wages that are they are expecting to play every week and they're not playing. And that's, that's a huge problem for them, yeah. Well, I couldn't imagine being the manager and having 32, 33 players staring back at me on a Monday morning and... I'd say the vast majority of those players think they should be starting. I mean, I, I don't know what the biggest squad you ever uh, was uh, were part of was, but I mean, I don't I don't even know how you do a training session with thirty three players. Yeah, well, I think it's diff- it is difficult now, isn't it? How how can a manager say I'm going to go off with my you know you, you're preparing for a game maybe on a on a Saturday or whatever it's going to be, and maybe on a on a Wednesday or a Thursday you want to work with your eleven, you want to work on set pieces, you want to work on you know, a few little um, patterns of play and things like that through the team. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's so difficult if you're doing it early in the week to a lot of those, to a lot of those players that aren't involved now and you, you're pulling the 11 away and you've got, as you say, 20, you've got a, you've got two squad of, or two teams of players that are going to play, I don't know, do, do various sessions and do various drills. It's demoralising. It, it, it rarely happened to me, Joe, rarely happened to me, but maybe I was part of, of a, t- a group of 10 that yeah. were pulled away to go and do extra running or extra extra maybe work on various things as well. It's it's not great. It's no. not great to do. I have to say that it isn't. It, it, you want to be part of the 11. You want you want to be part of it all. And it, you touched on it there that the, a vast majority, I would probably say every one of those 33 or four players or whatever it is that he's, that he's got and he's working with, all feel I should be playing. I've got to be in this starting 11. And when they're not, um, I can only imagine the body language. You can only imagine the, you know, the maybe one or two tackles going in in training, one or two that are feeling the frustration, and that, as I said, manifests through the club very quickly. And it's difficult to to get through that. It is, and for Lampard to go in and take that job, I never really appreciated. I never really thought of that when he when he was taking it, thinking, mm. look, he's going to get results like you were thinking. He's he's going to get results regardless. Just There's too much the quality talent, there yeah. for them. Exactly. The, 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 he's going to do that. I didn't necessarily take that other side into it, but when you think about it and you feel, I, I do, as much as, you know, I, I, he's in such a high profile job and he's got to get results regardless. I feel for him in that respect, but you do think that it is damaged. He's damaged oh, yeah, now. No, I, he I, is. I, I, Absolutely I, is. I, I, Absolutely totally is. sympathetic. I think he's watching his career prospects dwindle in real time and he's smart enough to know what's happening. Uh, just a final thought then we'll call this the Saudi the Saudi section so it seems uh, 
Uh, Lionel Messi's going to Saudi Arabia, which I'll come to in a moment. And then Newcastle. Ah, oh, no, he can't, Joe. He, he is, can't. Sure, he is, no, he, is, he can't, he is. can he? I'll come to that in a second. And then Newcastle are in what, third. What, 400 million euro deal? Well, they're... Billion, billion euros. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go with Messi first then, and I'll, then I'll ask you about Newcastle. Yeah. So this is AFP. Right. Uh, it's done deal, apparently, is what AFP are reporting. Oh. He will play in Saudi Arabia next season, said the uh, source. <coughs> and they say the contract is exceptional. It's huge. So, I mean, if they're giving Ronaldo 400 million net for two years, I would think Messi's probably getting 600 million if he's uh, negotiating. Yeah. And, they were uh, talking a billion, weren't they? Were they, were they not saying a bill, around about a billion probably. euros, billion dollars or something, billion dollar deal? Probably. That's what they tried to, to buy Tiger from uh, to take him to live golf, wasn't it? So that is they're true. offering something similar. It, you're buying the brand, aren't you? Um, and I... I don't know. There was so much talk over here in, in North America that he, he was nailed on to Miami. He's got a place in Miami. That's where his family are, are settled and that would have been the perfect place for him to go and he could have had maybe concentrated on Argentina ahead of the next World Cup, less flight time and things like this. There was talk that that could be the, the, the big pull but difficult to turn a billion dollars down or whatever, whatever it's going to be. Can you imagine being put in that position? I don't know but I just it's just it's a grim ending. I'd rather he went. I'd rather he went back and played for twenty grand a week at Barcelona. I know they can't afford anything. But I know, just, but they're they st- uh, they're offering him twenty five million a year. Although I suppose next to a billion, maybe that's uh, just not enough. I know, I know. It's but it, just, it is a grim killer, ending. I mean, between uh, Qatar uh, tourism and then uh, now heading to Saudi, he's picking his friends. He is picking his friends. Yeah, I'm I not. I, do you know what, Joe? I, I, that's, he's doing. He's got his commercial hat on and things like that, and he's doing what he's doing. He's doing his thing, and I don't know. I, I do feel he's the greatest, and I've got no no issue doing what what he wants to do. You know, if he wants to take the money, fair play to him. You know, whatever. And I don't think he's necessarily thinking like most of us would be thinking in terms of what's happened in that country no. and you know and human rights record and all these sort of things. And we talk about Qatar in the past and what happened with them getting the World Cup. Mm. Um, but and Kiwi agrees with me down there as well. But um, but I, I it, to me personally, I just think well, look, stick go go somewhere. He talk about the next World Cup and what it means to him to to be a player defending your title at a World Cup. Put yourself in the best position for that. Now, whether that's staying in Europe and playing 25 games a season, the MLS made, made sense to me. Personally, it made sense to me for that one just because of flights and things like that. That's what I was thinking. But And he could have had a franchise. It could have been something that he could have had something for the next 10 or 15 years, something for him to really get longevity out of his own career uh, post, uh, post-playing. post but I don't know. It's, it's it's killer for me personally. It's a killer for me that I think. No, it is. It is. Uh, a few people on YouTube say they are thoroughly enjoying you doing the uh, chat from a crash. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 that's all I am. Full time dad. These full time. Days, I told you so. Full time dad. Listen, I, I, you've got your hands full. We'll talk about know, Newcastle baby. another I know, time. Baby. I will. Uh, I will let you go. I uh, hope you're keeping well. Very good to talk to you. Yeah, everything's good. Great to speak to you, Joe. Thanks very much for having me on. No, no, no. Jeez, the pleasure is ours any time. Kevin Kilban, good luck. Good night. Thanks so much for your time again. And our football show on uh, Off the Ball, as ever, brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports.